Hi there. I hope you're all well and feeling clever. Although by the end of this talk, you might not want to be very clever. Let's start with a, a common saying and a, and a quotation. <clears throat> Ignorance is bliss. Means that you know, if you know nothing, you'll be happy. Because when you don't know certain things, you'll not feel uncomfortable. For example, if a smoker didn't know smoking was a bad habit, they wouldn't feel bad about smoking. Ernest Hemingway, the author, wrote, Happiness in intelligent people is the rarest thing I know. So he was saying that intelligent people are often unhappy. So is there any truth in what I just said? You would think not, but you might be surprised. Let's look first at how intelligence is measured. The most common intelligence test is the IQ test, or intelligence quotient test. An IQ of 85 to 114 is considered average. 115 to 129 is above average. Then we move into the high scores, which few people attain. Only 2.4% of people who take an IQ test score enough points to be considered gifted with a score of 130 to 144. A genius is someone who scores between 145 and 159, which is just 1% of people. Above 160 and you are an extraordinary genius. Albert Einstein was considered an extraordinary genius. Let's now look at some of the research on this topic. The first, <clears throat> which followed some gifted young people and some genius young people. After the war, the psychologist Lewis Terman studied 1,500 school children from the gifted and genius categories in order to find out whether their superior intellectual capabilities resulted in them becoming super successful in their future endeavours. Did they become rocket scientists, top medical surgeons and the great leaders of the world? Well, certainly not all of them. Terman found that on average their salaries were two times higher than the average white collar worker's salary. However, many of the group chose more mundane and humble professions like police officers and office workers. Thus, Terman concluded that intellect and achievement are not closely correlated, meaning that just because you are intelligent does not mean you will be successful. Another striking finding was that these gifted and genius young people were not necessarily happier than their less intellectual peers, sorry, less intelligent peers. Terman found that levels of divorce, alcoholism and suicide were about the same as the national average. Let's now consider the reasons why highly intelligent people are no happier than the average person. One strong possibility is that highly intelligent people have so much expectation placed on them that they find it difficult to live up to these expectations. When they feel they are underperforming because of the pressure, they get depressed. The burden of expectation is too much for them. I'll describe an excellent example of this. In the 1990s, a 12-year-old child genius entered Oxford University to study maths. This was national news at the time. The high expectations became too much for her to cope with and she dropped out of university, although she did eventually complete the degree. But she worked in menial and mundane jobs after that, like an administrative assistant and even a prostitute. She never quite lived up to the expectations people had of her. Another reason given for intelligent people being less happy and fulfilled than the average person is that they see the world's problems 
and the world's failings more clearly than others do. This can drive them to worry more about these things, leading to potential depression. A third reason is that highly intelligent people do not always make the best decisions in life. Researchers have found that the more intelligent you are, the less you base decisions on objective criteria. Uh, good uh, support for this comes from the fact that someone with an IQ of 140 is twice as likely to spend all of the money they are allowed on their credit card than an average person. So, to summarise, the pressure to be successful, overthinking the world's problems, and poor decision-making can make exceptionally intelligent people unhappy, even though they are likely to be earning more money. Of course, all of this does not consider how to measure happiness, which is a different issue entirely, and perhaps one for another day. Now, if you'd like to read into any of these topics in more detail, I'll just list out the sources. You can refer to Grossman et al. in 2014, Zagorski in 2007, West et al. in 2012, Stanovich et al. in 2013, and Zettergren and Bergman in 2014. Thank you.